Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just real loud. And I, can't... I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. Clay Blackmore, thank you for doing this with me. And I, hey, it's my pleasure, Jen. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Well, it's okay. I have, I have some very specific things that I want to talk about with you based on some things that I've seen happening on Facebook. I have this list of people that I, you know, I want to reach out to over, you know, over time. And you've been on the list for a long time. And I've, I've known you to some degree for a long time. And I've known of you since I jumped into the industry 20 years ago. But recently, there has been a lot of traffic on Facebook that made me think of you. And I'm going to get to that. But first of all, I want you to tell me who you are for everyone else's benefit. Okay, great. Hey, Jed. Well, I've been uh, very fortunate in this industry to have started uh, my business 25 years ago. And prior to that, I worked for probably the best portrait wedding photographer in the world, Monty Zucker, for 15 years. We were friends and worked together. He took me all over the world. You know, we did the Kardashian wedding. We went to Asia, Australia, Europe. I was just carrying the bags for this guy. He's a rock star, but he gave me foundations and I still stick with those foundations today. So my business is mostly wedding, portrait, and a lot of family work. Now I'm doing commercial video. So I'm really just taking, you know, everything that comes at me. So that's who I am. I woke up this morning. I got ready for this. I was walking by the dining room table. My wife is sitting there drinking coffee. I said, hey, Vic, <laughs> what's the first thing you think of when you think of Clay Blackmore? She said, Monty Zucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, there without you go. Think, without thinking twice. And I, I'm kind of in that same camp. And maybe a lot of people are for good reason. I wanted to know, one of the things I wanted to know about you um, is how in the world that happened to begin with? Did that's you? Did, now, if my math is right, that started forty years ago. Wow, nineteen eighty four. Yeah, you're you're well, right about there. About forty years ago, sure. Yeah, how, I, how did I that a, happen? At Texas School of Photography, I was in college there in Huntsville, Texas. One year I was with Rocky Gunn. One year Dean Collins. One year Monty Zucker. And when Monty came through, I was just, you know, on fire. And he said, hey, would you like to go back to Maryland? And I said, let's go. And four months later, I'm shooting some of the biggest weddings in the world with him and for him. So, whoops, dropped the mic. So he took me into a whole new stratosphere of, of work at a completely different level. And I went back to college, got my degree, and I learned more in three months working for Monty than I did in three years in college, you know? That kind of thing. Why did he pick you? Uh, you know, he told me I was a self-starter. That it wasn't about the photography or who I was or how, you know, I'm, I'm emotional every time we talk about this. I'm already crying when we talk about Monty. Mm. He took me down this uh, road, but it's because I just kept moving. You know, I kept the room clean. Every time there was a break, there was a reset. It was really, you know... All right, I got to tell you the story real quick, Jed. They all this go is to why, this yeah, is why this we're is doing this, Clay. I, right. I didn't know you were going to get emotional, or certainly not so quickly about him. But I'm, I'm touched by how, I'm touched by how you obviously felt about the man. You know, I knew yeah. of Monty, but I didn't know him like, like you did, obviously. And it, that is, I think that's pretty special. Tony Corbell was the Wrangler, and I was the Maverick. And they were all going to lunch. And the, the class kept saying, uh, the instructors, hey, Monty, take some pictures of these models. We need pictures because that's how we pay them. And Monty kept saying, well, I didn't even bring my camera. You know, I, he brought a video camera. He was so ahead of his time, he did everything through projection. Okay, this is, you know, 40 years ago. Right. And that's how you get it, man, Jed. When you start projecting your work immediately and refining it on a television in front of 40 people, you get it, you get it right, you know? And so finally, Tony Corbell handed me his Hasselblad and said, look, 
during lunch, you need to photograph these models because somebody's got to do it. So they all leave for lunch. And I walked over. The bride was a friend of mine. She's in a wedding gown. And I said, okay, Lisa, sit over there. The lights were all set up. You know, so I said, I can't miss. But my heart started pounding. Like, I'm so nervous. Whatever comes out of this camera, the whole world's going to see. So I looked over in the wall with my print set. It was these big 2020 prints. And there's the seated three-quarter bride, the one he's known for the best. I walk over. I grab that print. I walk over to the bride and said, do this. And she posed. I laid it by the camera. And I copied that print verbatim. And then I went to the next one and the next and the next. So the next day, they said, Mr. Zucker, here's your pictures. It was a 12 roll of VPS. Right. And he grabs those five by fives. You can still smell the, you know, the prints, how they used to smell back then. And he looked at that first picture and he was looking at it. And I'm like, oh man, I'm in trouble now. And he said, when did I take this? <laughs> and then he looked at the next one he's, and there was the groom and his head was tipped the wrong way. Instead of like this, it was like this. He said, I didn't take this. Who took these pictures? So I raised my hand in the back and the next day I got the job offer. And that was it? That was it. That's a great story. Oh, I, you know, it's, there's elements of that story that people don't, that people that yeah. are familiar with how things work now, they don't quite grasp, right? Obviously, you're working with film. You're talking about him projecting and everyone's like, well, I've been projecting for 15 years. Man, it was All a right. huge I got deal. Good cry out of the way. It was a you know huge deal to do that back then. Yeah, Monty said, um, when I, Tony came to me in the back room, he said, hey, I gotta tell you something. Uh, Monty's gay. And I was like, really? That's great, he's cool. I could tell he's so happy all the time. <laughs> That's how far back, 40 years ago, right, there was right, no right. such thing as gay back in Texas. Right. It was like, right. really? Well, I, I could tell. He's always laughing. Yeah, so he went super up, happy you know, guy. And then I, I traveled the world with him with a wedding gown, so people started wondering about me. So <laughs> right. they go, oh, yeah, we know. We know you right. guys together, you right. know, and I'm traveling in a pair of tight jeans carrying a wedding gown right. with Monty Zucker, who wore his right. heart on his sleeve. But it turned out great for me because uh, I saw the world, and... I've been married for 27 years. I have a 14-year-old son, and so all is good on, on that front, too. So, well, anyway. tell, me, tell me this. We, we can stick with Monty just a little bit more because I think it's a big, okay. it's a big part of your story. What's the, what's the biggest thing that you learned from him? And I know that's a super open-ended question, but what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Okay. Technique will never let you down, and it's really learning the basics, the foundations. He studied with Joe Zeltzman, and now I have Joe Zeltzman estate, and I have Monty's estate, and I look at these pictures all the time, and I see this work that looks better now than people are putting out daily today with flash on camera, with no technique. So they were using four by five and Hasselblad's. They were putting that loop shadow on. They were doing full face, two thirds profile. They weren't messing around. They were getting it right on the film. You know, Joe Zeltzman wrote the books for Kodak, uh, you know, how it all puts together as far as exposure. So Monty and I were teaching foundations. So when you do that over and over, Jed, your hands form unbreakable patterns so you can work in the, from the heart. And that's what it's all about. It's not thinking all the time and talking about what you're doing. It's just working from the heart. That's what it is. Is it, is it that you're doing, you, you've got these fundamentals down so that you develop kind of a muscle memory, so to speak, so that you're not having to think about what you're doing and you can think about the relationship that you're, that you're engaged in with your subject? Is, am I getting that right? You are. You're, you're getting it perfect because what it is, it's um, the, the longest road is from the head to the heart. That's a long road. And a lot of photographers are working up here. But when you can work from the heart, people feel it. And so you can, you can be like a musician who's really got the foundations. And if something's going wrong or something's a plan B or plan C, it, it doesn't bother you because you can just keep moving through these situations. And a lot of that comes from, uh, what would you say, just perseverance and experience, doing it over and over and seeing mm -hmm. all these different things. I photographed a child yesterday 
And it's like a chess game. You throw a, a move at the child and he throws a move at you. And you have to be nimble and it has to be fast and you <laughs> yeah. get the moment, you know? Right. And if you go and look at my Facebook and if you look at my um, Instagram, I'm throwing up some really beautiful things and it's family, wedding. I've been really lucky to, to do the seven or eight weddings during these shutdown, uh, so to speak. Right. And it's been my weddings. So I put a deal together with a, with a wedding venue and I love it. I've never had more fun and freedom at a wedding because there's really six people, eight people, 10 people. Right. So I'm like the event planner with a camera. So right. I tell them, we're going to do this. Now we're going to do this. Now you guys go have fun. Go drink a little. I'm thinking, <laughs> do they want to spend any time with me? No, they want to spend time having a wedding, having right. friendship, having fun. But let's let them have a good time and then say, now give me 30 minutes. And man, it's just like, you know, 30 minutes of pure energy, fun, lightning round. Let's get it in the camera. Now go drink a little more and wait for the sunset and let's go do it again. And and the pictures have never been better, Jed. I mean, I've, I've never for had... real? Yeah, never been better. Never better, ever. And um, just having the time of my life shooting these weddings. Well, that's kind of what I... Okay, so that's that's a nice segue into what I was trying to get to. Like, this is all falling right into place for me and unintentionally, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I see you as... Okay, so you're carrying on... I feel like to some degree, you're carrying on his legacy and you're building your own at the same time time you have built your own at the same time right sure sure um and that's so that's kind of how i i see you um most people if not virtually all people don't have the opportunity never get that opportunity that you had to spend 15 years with with a legitimate absolute legend in the industry right true, true. and not only that but now in the last 25 or so years you have made such a powerful name for yourself like you basically took the gifts that you were given, I feel like, and you used those talents, so to speak, right? And now yes. you forged your own path, which I think is awesome and fantastic because it didn't have to go that way, Clay, True. right? You know, it didn't have to, True. but it did. And so this is the thing that I've been wondering, all these, you mentioned Tony Corbell and I'll, I'll throw out <laughs> Skip Cohen because these are names of people that I've been seeing. You guys are all, everyone's throwing out these images lately from Texas school. Yeah. Right from uh, I think I saw one I don't know from Mape or some some other different place where they're throwing out all these images lately and that has seemed to like kind of uh, be something that has happened more and more lately and your name is either you're either tagged in the image mm -hmm. <laughs> or yeah. you're in a comment or uh, on my Facebook screen it says Clay Blackmore liked this image right so I see that you're engaging with all this lately is what's going on with all of you guys lately do you think? That's awesome because I think we're afraid that somebody's trying to take our industry away from us. Uh, you know, the, the shutdown and the, the government, uh, you know, COVID's real, there's no doubt, but mm -hmm. is it overplayed? I, I think it's way overplayed. And I think the small business owner is, you know, getting slammed. And especially yeah. the wedding event, uh, we're, we're right in the crosshairs of this thing. And mm -hmm. we're, we're all like missing our industry. So when we get a chance, we're really going after it hard. You know, we look back at those moments and say, that was a different time of life. And it really was. And um, you just, you hang on to that. You know, you don't want to lose it. What is the biggest difference between then and now, other than the, you know, other than the COVID mess, but in your mind, again, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? And really, I don't know, you could even say what's the biggest difference 20 years ago to 10 years ago, you could say 40 years ago to 20 years ago, but hasn't it, hasn't, haven't the differences increased that much more as the time has passed? You know, that, that's a good question. I mean, things are changing uh, almost daily under our feet. What I'm thinking about is everyone that comes through my door, I want to give them a lasting impression on, on how I can make them happy through photography and what, what I can do. And, my thing, Jed, is bat batting a thousand. So, you know, if you're in the major leagues, like last night, the guy hit two home runs yeah. and the Rays or something like that. That yeah. was great. So, what did he bat? Maybe 500. I don't know. But, you know, if you bat 500, you're Hall of Fame. Yeah. But in photography, oh. I'm uh, I'm batting a thousand, one thousand every time. So, I'm going to tell mean? you. What does that mean? 
I'm going to tell you how to bat a thousand every time I hit it out of the park. Every single time I get to the plate, the ball goes over the fence. It's a home run. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the secret. Okay. But you, you prompt me at the very end of this webcast and I'll tell you the secret. You got to stay with me to the end. Okay. But it is batting a thousand with Clay Blackmore. That's the title okay. of this program. Okay. Now, I said, I said it was going to be about being focused because I'm like, all over the place. You know, I'm doing golf course photography right now. I'm doing families, children. I'm about to do a commercial video. I'm doing uh, just everything that comes my way. And somebody said, Clay, if you'd be focused, you could make a lot of money, but you're doing too many things. But what I am focused with is my time. And, um, you know, I put a clock back here somewhere because, you know, every 15 minutes is kind of a picture of your whole life. How do, you, how do you explain that? If you take an oak tree and you pull the leaf off and you squint your eye down and you look at the leaf, it's a profile of the tree. And that happens with most trees in nature. You know, you look at the magnolia leaf or the redwood and that means that little things add up to big things, okay? If you look at a mountain range and you say, well, what a beautiful mountain range. But you look at a piece of it, that piece of the mountain range it actually mimics the whole mountain range. And if you just take a rock off of that mountain range and you look at it and you squint your eye, the edge of that rock looks like the whole mountain range. Isn't this cool? And if you put a fleck of that under a microscope, actually the composition of that mountain range is in that composition under a microscope. So what I'm telling you is if, if I have an appointment today at, with you at 11, but I show up at 11.30, and then I have a 12 and I'm late for that. And then I forget to pick up my son. Mm. And then if, I, if every day is like that, my whole life adds up to this guy who can't get it done. Mm. So what we have to do is we have to control every 15 minutes, every five minutes. You know, every minute of your day is important. So we just got to keep moving and thinking, how do we stay on track? So, you know, goal setting is important, but, you know, I just type a list, you know, every day I get up, you know, it's got, what do I got to do today? How am I going to get through this? What's important? What's going on next week? You know, how do you keep up with all the passwords? I was just going to joke with you, you know, when I was trying to get online with you guys, I mean, you must have the same thing. I have 30 passwords and then every day they're saying, you need to change your password. And I'm like, uh, I don't want to, because uh, I, I finally it. remembered it, you know? I know it. I know it. Uh, that's not that's not getting any easier. I I get what you're saying and I and I see the wisdom in it and it sounds exhausting. No. It's just it's <laughs> not it's not um uh, I guess for me it's it's just um uh, staying but you know there's downtime for sure. There's time yes. with family. Yes. Uh you know I, you won't believe this. I mean that we're going way down another path. I I got into this truth that the Sabbath is on Saturday. Guess what? We've been going to church on Sunday. I was a deacon in a Baptist church for 20 years, off and oh. on. But now I'm trying to take Saturday off. Well, I'm a wedding photographer. Well, guess what? All these micro weddings have been on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And really, it's just really worked out for me. So I'm trying to shut down 24 hours every Sabbath. Sundown Friday, just unplug. And that has been really, really good for me. That sounds Jewish. It, you know what? Not Baptist. It's so funny. We could go, this could be a whole new program, but it's the, it's, it's the truth. The Bible is not a sliver at the back for the Christians and the big part in the front for the uh, Jews. It's really the whole Bible is scripture for all of us. And yeah. there's one Sabbath. And it's, again, we've been tricked. We've been tricked. The Sunday worship, you know, all these things. If we could just take some time and just lock off a 24-hour period, that's exactly how we're supposed to do it. So I agree 100% that, that the rest piece is important, which is why I, I think I probably why I said that it sounds exhausting. But what's, take me to the batting a thousand thing. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to make you come back to that, you said. All right, let's do it. You know, and, and it's a good time. It's a good segue. So when a customer comes to your door and you get in, excited with them and you listen and you find out what they want, and you, you, now with the internet, you can say, let's jump on Google. Show me some images that, that resonate with you. And, and you're like, oh, I love this. Let's go out and let's do that, but let's do it better. You know, I call that R&D. You know what R&D is, Jed? R&D, research and development. development. I right. call it rip off and duplicate. 
<laughs> rip off and duplicate or do it better. Some of my best work, you know, I'm looking at Hollywood work of Cecil Beaton, Harrell. Yeah. I'm looking at the best. I'm looking at these guys, Avedon, people who just lived it, man. They just went so hard. And then I just, I just look at that work and I'll even show it to my customer. Let's do this. And they'll look at me and say, you think you can do that? I'm like, well, if you'll work with me and we can work together, we can do this. And then what it is really, you have to love yourself, love your industry and love your customer. And then even if the pictures are bad, you know, if they're out of focus, they're going to like them because they like you. They like who you are, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I saw one of your webcasts, Jen Rosenbaum. She said Jen the same Rosenbaum. thing. Joe, Joe yeah. Busink says, it's not about the photography. It's about who you are, you know, who you are as a person. Do you treat people fair? Do you talk to them like, you know, not a customer, but a friend. So, you know, I've got customers that just, you know, they're friends and they're not going to, they're not going to ever say, uh, a bad thing and they're going to love the work even if it's bad but guess what as technique keeps layering on top and as the ideas keep coming in it's it's a win-win because there's no way i can fail i've got the technique i've got the talent i communicate with the people and communications everything they're going to love the work so how do you do it you got to love your work you know love who you are how um how does that align with, I, I read a quote from you that said, I, I want to photograph how people feel, not how they look. Oh gosh, that's so funny. You know, I was, on the I was on the phone with a bride once and she says to me, and I used to be so busy, Jed, back in, I had a, I mean, we used to do like 50 weddings a year and everything and we could hardly breathe. And she's on the phone and that's what she said to me. I want to find a photographer who can photograph how I feel not how I look. Oh. I thought that is so beautiful. Oh, so yeah. I'd be interviewing brides like three or four a week and this bride sit in the chair and I said, I want to photograph how you feel, not how you look. And she said, that's what I told you on the phone. And I'm like, oh, busted, you know, I got you, that from you a bride. Said, <laughs> you you <laughs> said that to her. <laughs> She's like, I told you that. <laughs> that's right. That's so good. That's tell me, good. Tell me this though, because all right. I understand everything you're saying. I don't disagree with what you're saying. But what about, I mean, this year in particular is a good example. Like, what about when it gets really hard, Clay? You've been and doing this for a long time. This isn't the only difficult year that you have faced. This isn't the only difficult season in, in your life that you have had to overcome. What do, you, what do you do when things get rough? You know, I just went through a period of rough like nobody knows because I bought a studio on seven acres in the heart of D.C. area. You know, I'm talking about my dream, okay? I'm, I'm 30 minutes from the White House on seven acres, okay? And then all of a sudden things just start, you know, tumbling. Like the taxes got higher and the interest went up and the insurance went up. And the money was going this way and the bills were going that way. And dude, I'm telling you, I, I was losing sleep. And so I sold everything and we, I'm pivoted and I've got a new studio. I'm excited about that. But, you know, I feel for a lot of my friends who didn't or haven't got out yet. I mean, I'm looking on Facebook yesterday and there was a photographer who I've known for years. I've done a lot of work with him. He announced his new position as a realtor. Hey, just want to let you know, I joined the team and da 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 da, da. Photographers yeah. are falling by the wayside. You know, they are, you know, this industry is shifting so fast because, you know, if you don't have a base like I've got, you know, after 35 years yeah. of people in the area, you're going to have trouble. It's not an industry you want to just jump in right now. Right. So it's been rough. Yeah, moving is never easy. And I'm, I'm sure you, I think you just mentioned, and you guys have done a little moving around here and there. It's yeah. so hard, you know, to, I mean, those hard drives have years of memories on them and, you know, you move them here, move them there, computers. The computer I'm talking to you on right now, I dropped it right on concrete. I'm so glad it fired back up because it's got a compass in this computer to every file I've ever made over the last 30 years. Oh. The program, it's backed up now, but it wasn't then. <laughs> <laughs> It is now. That's a good way to, that's a good way yeah. to get your stuff backed up. 
Yeah, so things are rough, and you know, I am real spiritual, and I go real hard to the uh, to the word. You know, Psalm ninety one, it just says, "Hey, I'm going to cover you." You know, there's a pestilence, but don't worry about it. You know, my mom, she's so cool. By my door, there used to be a vintage security sign that would say, "Hey, this house is secured by vintage." You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You've seen those little signs. Yes. My mom made one that said Psalm ninety one. Put that by your door because <clears throat> it says. Everything is going to pass you over. I'm going to hide you like a chicken hides her, you know, her chicks under her wings. So I, I kind of live off that uh, that motto, Psalm 91. You get your faith from your mama? Yeah, I mean, I go that far back. I'm a, my mother's, she's an angel, real spiritual. Yeah. yeah. I could see how that could that could help you through to, through times like this. What do you say to people that struggle despite right i know a lot of people that have faith and they're they're struggling terribly right now what, yeah. what do you say to them you know it, it's it's just uh i i feel for them i've been there and i just i think they have to um you know they have to value the customers i you know when people felt like they took this industry away from me. So when I started getting phone calls, I was like, sure, I'm running a half price special. I'm doing this. I'm doing some of these pivot, these micro weddings for $300. I just yeah. want to be working. I want to be out with the camera. So I am, I'm, I've done seven weddings for 250. But you know what? I go in there with such, you know, energy and such a touch. The people are responding financially. You know, they're, yeah. they're bringing it back. So right. you just have to get people in front of your camera and you just do keep your best. going. Yeah, just keep going. Keep your head down. What's keep that your hand quote on the from wheel. Winston Churchill? It's one of my favorite quotes. If you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I like that so, one. I you don't want to stop. That. You don't. You don't want to stop there. That's it's from a, Winston. That's not from me. That's not a place to stop. Um, but th yeah, this I, is. A, it's, yeah, it's a good discussion about, you know, the, 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 the pain. I jump on Facebook a lot and people, they tend to hide it and gloss over it, you know, but right. I, you know, people are hurting deep down inside. What's the next year look like for you? Like all things considered, you know, it, you've got this great attitude. You just keep on going. You have your faith. What does the next year look like for you? Do you think? You know, I, I think motion is where I'm heading. And I've been trying to head into motion for so long, uh, you know, making video, commercial video, mm -hmm. because, you know, the corporations have money and they all need their message in 30 seconds or a mm -hmm. minute. So I'm investing more time and energy into sound, lights, motion, <clears throat> you know, the cameras that do that, you know, as an explorer of light for 25 years, I have some nice gear out there. But when all this, uh, the new uh, R5 came out, you know, I just, I miss that group so much, you know, but I'm posting like crazy and putting Team Cannon on everything. But sure. they let 20 explorers go, you know, and it, it was kind of hard yeah. to take to lose yeah. that position. But because um, I felt like I did so much for the brand but the brand did so much for me. You know, I've got the carriage right. printers. I'm going to decorate a golf course next week uh, with my printer. But a lot of that's trade out. So my 14 year old can play one of the best golf courses in Maryland. You know, but that's soft dollars, awesome. soft dollars are good. You know, everybody yeah. does barter. Yeah. But the next year it looks like more and more motion. You're doing more yeah. motion, you know, video. As a producer, or I mean, are you behind the camera in those Man, scenarios? Like, I love shooting. I love framing up the shots and, and um, it's terrible to try to do too much. And you know, right. you need to have a sound person, right. a lighting person. So I've got a lot of people in the mix that just jump in and help me. And uh, you know, it's, I, I, like to be the, I like to be behind the camera, I re really do. I like to light it, you know, the loop shadow, like Monty taught me, I like to get the right. kicker lights going, the air right. light. And then I, I basically do a portrait of you, Jed, and then I get it all perfect, the lights are good, get the mic going, pin you or do a boom mic and say, now let's talk. And then I'm pretty good about drawing people out, you know, just asking the right questions, you know. What advice do you think Monty would have for people right now? Man, that is a solid question. 
I know he would just keep saying, stick to your um, technique and stick to the foundations and uh, be a business person with a camera, you know, and, and don't try to do everything yourself. You know, find a front person. If you're not great with communicating with people, mm -hmm. because that's really, as we get down to it, is communication. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to make a living in photography, you've got to be able to communicate with people with money. You've got to mm -hmm. talk it through. You got to make people feel comfortable for opening up their checkbook. So yeah. if you're not great at that, you need to hire someone that can front you, you know, somebody who can be your front. And that's what Monty would say is that you need to treat this like a business. You know, it's not a hobby. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, brother, I, I appreciate your time. This was, this was really, really good. I appreciate your emotions. You wear your heart on your sleeve too. <laughs> you're right you're right you, you learned that from Monty too i think maybe i i got interviewed by the explorers group and i cried and i told them the next day dan i told dan neary i said look you, you can't use that video he says we love it he goes, that's one of our favorites because that's you you yes, know yes it's, yes it's funny i i and, appreciate the genuineness that you bring to the table and i thank you for your time in joining me um, sure. Stay strong and keep on going. And thanks for the inspiration, Clay. Thank you. And I'm, I'm a big fan of White House Custom Color. You know, I really am. I, I order a lot from you guys. And with this new office, I'm getting ready to place a huge metal order. I want about 10 metal prints around yeah. the new place. And yeah. uh, no, seriously. And um, I do a lot of DVD covers. And um, it's not just about that, but I do use the best labs. I mean, I've got that big printer out there. But man, I would never print for customers because you got to mount it, you got to texture it, you got to yeah, spray it. Buddy. So I, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. all about the final product. I really am about delivering something that I would hang on my wall. And, and also doing an album that my sister, if it were her wedding, she would love it. So it's about family. We get right back down to how do you bat a thousand? You treat people like family. There you go. I appreciate it. Thank you. And right. good luck in your new space. Thanks. I'll keep you posted and uh, maybe we'll make a little video and we can tag it up on your YouTube page one day. That's not a bad idea, Clay. I like that idea. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jeff. Have a good one, brother. Bye-bye. See ya. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. <laughs>